Okay, once again, the death of Karin Hapuk Akbaga is in the news with rights group maintaining their stance that a 14-year-old died from the sepsis resulting from sexual assault on her. The mother and rights group have released an audio recording that reveals a conversation between the school representatives and the mother of the diseased. Let's take a listen to this report. This is the second press conference from the mother of late Karen and rights group. Once again, Karen's mother and rights group maintains their stance. Karen was raped. We were home on Saturday. Sunday, she was home with me. But about 11 p.m., she came to me and said she had vomited. And I asked her what she said she just vomited. So I cleaned her up. She laid on my bed. The next day, by 4.35 a.m. in the morning, she asked for water. I gave her water. But what I saw, she was delirious and all that. So I quickly prepared and took her to the hospital. So when they saw she was weak, they had to give her a treat. And because she couldn't go to urinate herself, they said they were inside the catheter. In the process, they saw a discharge. And when that discharge was tested, they said it was a condom. And then they tested her urine, said it had dead spermatozoa in it. And all this while, while they were trying to treat her, she kept on shouting. I reiterate the call by the coalition for instead of Premier Academy running quietly to go and tell lies in various media organizations, let's have a media round table. Let's have a media dialogue. Come with your facts. Give you three or four people to represent you. We do not need more than one person to represent the coalition in order to expose all of the shenanigans, the lies, the cover-up that they've been putting up. The truth must prevail. Karen will not be a mere statistics when it comes to collating statistics on child sexual abuse. Our own case, we must get the perpetrator. While Premier School in previous press releases say they are not aware of anything suggesting Karen was raped, but rather pointing a finger on the possibility that she may have died from diabetes. Here is an audio evidence which captured a conversation with the school's matron, the mother, and a teacher when they visited Karen in hospital. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm so surprised that she was going through this and she never told anybody because She's, she's close to all of us in the clinic because of her condition. She's close to all of us. So I don't know who that person is, if the person threatened her. I was surprised. I was seriously angry with the mother. Because she was close to us. 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 I'm totally confused myself because I never, I never expected. <laughs> and if there is one like this among them, who says there's not another person that has been a victim and whoever has been responsible for this? Yes. I'll be doubt. I was just imagining the kind of supervision we say we are doing. I tell you, sir. How? I understand. You left this girl with us, thinking we'll be able to take care of her. So for this kind of news to come out, it's really surprising. The girls use condom. Ah, this is impossible. This is what the mother is practicing is there. Yeah. So that means this thing even happened recently, not something that is recently. Arise News on securing this evidence reached out to Premier School, which previously denied any knowledge of rape or even an existence of sexual assault in the school for response. He never admitted that uh, there was uh, a case of uh, assault on care. What he was trying to do is just normal for somebody you know, that is being confronted with something of such. The first thing you do as a legal person is you look into it. That was the first time they were being confronted with such allegations. So you are saying that that's not an that's not an affirmation or confirmation because it's no. not You saw a spermatozoa in the girl that went to the about about fifty two hours ago. Is you know if it's if it's then it will be recently if at all if at all 
Are you with me? Yes, it's just normal. All allegations, whenever uh, that, are, that you have been confronted or um, been confronted with, you investigate. Mm. It is over six weeks and the autopsy result is not out. Once again, Arise News reached out to the police public relations officer, but no response. Until then, the search for the truth continues. Amaka Okoye, Arise News. Well, thank you, Amaka, for that report. And now we're being joined by child and gender rights advocates, Lem Ogegbe. Um, let me thank you so much for all that you're doing, really, because I know that you've always been there for the family of Karen since the onset of this incident. You know, the worst thing that can happen to a parent is to lose a child. But even hear that your child was allegedly the sexually... Se the, the circumstances... Raped mm. and sodomized. But let's go beyond what we know, which is the fact that, unfortunately, she died. I know that an autopsy was ordered on her body. What is the update concerning that? Are we any closer to finding out what happened to Karen? Okay, um, let's say while we await the autopsy result, the full autopsy result, we know that the Premier Academy, Lube Abuja, had two pathologists observing the procedure that was conducted. Uh, Karen's mo uh, family also had two pathologists. So there were preliminary findings. There were common grounds during the autopsy because the official pathologist, Dr. Desmond Ike Okonkwo, whatever he observed, he calls the two sets of pathologists observing for both parties together and he says, this is what I have found. Can we establish common grounds? Do you agree? Do you not agree? And the common grounds that we know was established was that she was not just raped, she was sodomized. Now it has taken the police, and of course we do know also that preliminary report of these preliminary findings was already supposed to have been with the police two weeks immediately after that autopsy was conducted. Interestingly, the same police, FCT Police Command specifically, that has shrouded the medical report in secrecy to the point that even the family, the mother of Karen Apuchapa, who even paid for all the medical uh, procedures, does not have a police report given to her. Not to talk about the way they are shrouding also in secrecy preliminary reports, because by all procedure and standard, two weeks after an autopsy is conducted, you ought to have a preliminary report. The police has not disclosed anything. And we are not pleased with the way the police has conducted this, especially that if my child dies under any circumstance, I'm entitled to, to a medical report that tells me that. It shows on professionalism. It even displays the police as playing the role of a public relations officer of Premier Academy Lube, because as we heard, the Deputy Commissioner of Police, Fon Pam Joseph, in the FCT command, even bungled the first time the autopsy was supposed to have been conducted, which was July 3rd, 2021, because he denied Dr. Desmond Ike Okonkwo access to the medical report. And the medical report is a compass by global standard, a compass by which you yeah, conduct autopsy. Right. Because if the issue you are investigating is around the mid rift of a child or of a diseased, you do not go cutting the legs. The medical report clearly says, because we obtained it, medical report says this child was raped, condom was left inside her, the condom contained dead spermatozoa, the condom infected the child with sepsis, which spiked her health in a bad direction, and she died. That is the medical report. And we are making a heavy weather about autopsy. You can make consultations. All medical practitioners will tell you clearly that the autopsy report cannot come out to, uh, to vitiate the veracity of the medical report. It can only expand on the scope, but it cannot change the fact that it's established by the medical report that Karen was raped and condom was in her, the condom cost her So what's the next move denied. of the family and the civil society organizations? Are we planning to sue officially? Let's make it abundantly clear that this week, the, this week starts, of course, today. The coalition of gender-based violence responders, it's growing in leaps and bounds. Lots of other civil society organizations are joining. And we are going to take concrete steps. One, we will go to the uh, 
the Inspector General of Police. We ought not do this. But in a place where systems have failed, ordinarily the Minister of um, Education and the Minister of Women Affairs ought not to wait for us to bring petitions. Mm. And it shows you the failing of government. Because now we are going to take steps. If the Minister of Women Affairs and the Ministry of Education do not make a statement in the next 24 hours, we are going to call for their sack because okay. it shows abdication of duty and we are going to ask the IG of police. Clearly, this is a sexual and gender-based violence issue and there is an office reputed with competent people to handle, to handle this. It. And we are talking of okay. the office of the first gender unit of the IGP, chaired, headed by uh, DCP Margaret Ochala. They've dealt with high-profile cases. These are people, in fact, DCP Margaret Ochala heading the gender unit. It's an, a time-honored professional. Okay. And she should be the one to handle okay. this with her unit. Uh, not giving it to the FCT police command All that right. has shown compromise. Well, let me, mm. it, it's a very it's sensitive It's a very sad uh, yeah. situation, uh, Lemmy. And uh, we hope uh, justice will be served. The truth will come out, no matter how uh, parties involved try to put this Absolutely. under the table. Well done for a good job, Lemmy Ugegbe.